One of the things that's fascinating, though, is that at the state level, when places like Florida have said, OK, we're going to ban certain types of social media practices, that does you know, get in the way of a libertarian idea. It's like my kids and I should be able to raise them the way that I want. Um, one of the, the big proposal that you have is age gating, is changing the age, the minimum age, raising it at, you know, under which kids can't have uh, access social media. Talk about that and how does that, you know, is that just, okay, this is a difference? Uh, with yeah. libertarian so, right. ideas. So this, this is the one place where I think I do have conflict with libertarians. Um, and, the, and I want to talk about it because, you know, I'm best friends with Greg Lukianoff. I have, you know, a lot of libertarian and I, Yeah, and if we, I mean, you're the co-author of, uh, with Greg of the Coddling of the American Mind, who on his substack wrote a critique or, or his concern, his First Amendment concerns with some of your policy proposals. And he writes, to paraphrase an old adage, it is unfair to den to deny a man a steak because a baby can't chew it. Um, so, let's see. It's what's unfair what's to wrong deny with Greg's? A man a steak because a baby can't chew yeah. it. Okay. And he's saying that a one size fits all government bans are one size fits all, he writes. That means those kids who benefit from social media, and there are plenty of them, would be out of luck. Parents know their kids better than anyone. Let them, not the government, make the decisions about what media they consume. Mm -hmm. How do you respond right. to that? So, so let's talk about let's talk about um, age gating. So, first, I would ask you or him or anyone else. So, let's start with pornography, strip clubs, and casinos. Um, so, let's talk about things that either involve sex or addiction. Uh, let's also bring in um, alcohol, nicotine. So, all these things when there is especially sex. Let's let's focus on sex or addiction. In the real world, we've largely said. You know what? Adults want to do these things. They're really harmful for kids who are not ready to make these decisions and their brains are developing. So in the real world, we've worked out all kinds of ways where adults can do what they want. And sometimes there's a little inconvenience. So when I was in high school, we could buy cigarettes from vending machines. Um, but then they realized, you know what, we have to stop that. And now people who, you know, people want to smoke, they have to actually pull out their driver's license and show it, and then they get their cigarettes. That's an inconvenience. I understand that. But in the real world, we've just we found ways to do that. We're only you know ten or twenty five years in, however you want to count it, into the internet age. Um, I'll, kind of, I'll I really consider it's really the early twenty tens is when the current internet age really began. So this is all very new for us, and so far we've done nothing. There's there's no protections of any kind. Um, well, so there is parental where could I How? mean parents either know or they don't know what their kids are doing, right? Because no. there are controls on all of the social media platforms and all of the devices. Um, parents either say they can't use them or they don't use them, which is similar to in the 90s when cable TV uh, was being attacked and we uh, created TVs with V-chips and ways of banning certain yeah, channels right. and parents didn't use them. That was, okay, well, that, that's but, right. So even when it was simple on one device, Parents often didn't use them. And then there would also be differences of education and marriage. There are going to be all yeah, kinds sure. of couples that are going to be trying to do it. There are all kinds of... So um, I would put it to you like this. Um, suppose, um, you know, I certainly want parents to have control, but here's the thing. Most parents feel they don't have control. Most parents don't want their kids on these things early, but they feel like they can't stop it. So something's going... If you value parental control and consent, you should be very upset with the way things are now. And you should ask for a change that would allow you to have the kind of policies that you want. Because right now, very few parents are able to do that. So think about it this way. Suppose, you know, suppose 100 years ago when they began to regulate, you know, passing laws on alcohol and drugs and all sorts of things. Suppose they said for alcohol, okay, the, you know, the age is 18, but we can't expect bars and casinos to enforce that. It's up to the parents. Parents, if you don't want your kids being in bars and casinos and strip clubs and, and other things, you keep them out. Well, that would mean you have to lock your kid up. You cannot let your kid out. Otherwise, you can't stop them. But it's but also, that, but the digital world if is I like want that. to go to a bar, I mean, because the, the age getting laws means that everybody has to enter co confidential information on a website in order to, well, how else do you do it? And it's not, if I want to go to a bar, I don't have to share my credentials that then get put into a database, which is going to be hacked. Et cetera. That's right. You know, in, okay. in a so state. Thank you for that. Yeah. So I think many people think, first of all, there's a misconception that, you know, that height wants to wants the government to control everything and wants the government to tell you how to raise your kids. 
again, I wrote the book assuming that nothing is going to happen on the government level, that we can do this all ourselves with collective action. The one place where it'd be really, really helpful would be if, if Congress would raise the age from 13 to 16 and require the platforms to actually share in the policing of it. Um, now, people assume then that I'm saying you have to show your driver's license, your government ID in order to open an account. Because we're not talking about logging onto your account. It's only to open an account. That's all. What I'm suggesting is that Congress undo the mistake it made when it said, you know, companies don't have to check age, uh, um, you know, the age is 13 at which you can give away your data and sign a contract with a company, but the companies don't have to check anything. Um, I want Congress to fix that and not say, as a couple of state bills do, that they have to require a driver's license. I don't want that. I want them to say, and the platform shall offer a menu or a range of options for doing age verification. There are many, many range things already there. So clear, the company clear. We, you know, many of us have clear to go to airports. You can use that to buy a beer at a stadium. It, it, you don't even have to show an ID, just, you know, I, I don't know whether it, in that case it's biometrics, but clear is one way. If you have a clear account, and my kids have clear accounts, um, so clear already what's is doing the, it. Twice. What's the liability that you would hold companies responsible for if uh, parents sue, uh, you know, Instagram and say, my daughter killed herself? And she shouldn't have been able to have an account. What happens to? I mean, well, under the are, under current practice, I think that the parents should be able to sue, um, and the companies have done everything they can, especially Meta. They've done everything they can to get the youngest kids they can. They want to do Instagram for kids. They talked about how do we get five and six year olds involved. So Meta, I think, should be held responsible for what it has done to kids. Now, what, what I'm suggesting is. For, especially for the underage. What I'm suggesting is, what if Congress were to actually undo the mistake, make it 16, require age verification, but not 100%. We don't expect like, oh, this kid got on, therefore you can sue Meta. But if Meta is doing a, a reasonably good job of, of putting in an obstacle, making it harder, then they wouldn't be sued for that. What do you do to the parent who lets their kid on at 13 rather than 16? Do, they get, do the kids get taken away? What's their liability? <laughs> Um, so, for, um, well, I mean, because like if, well, you know, wait, wait, if not, your kid was having sex below the age of consent, you know, child protective services would come in and be like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, no, no, no. What we're talking. So w what I'm really focused on here is not banning an experience. It's what are the laws around signing a contract at which you can give away your family's information and data without your parents knowing or consenting? What did you think that should be? I mean, do you think that any seven, any seven or eight-year-old should be able to just sign a contract with a company and tell them all about what you have in your house without you knowing? Like, how can this be the reality that we live in? So I'm not focused on banning an experience. I'm saying, at what age do we treat children as adults? And what Senator Markey did when he was in the House and he introduced COPPA, he said 16. You know, we, we've got teenagers dealing with all these new tech companies in the 90s. 16 should be the age. But various lobbyists, they pushed it down to 13. They gutted enforcement. So now it's essentially nothing. That was a mistake. What? what we, let me ask you, what age do you think uh, your my, kids should, should have been able to I make have, contracts with companies without yeah, you knowing? I have a Gen Z child as well as a millennial. And um, they got social media or they got unfettered access to the internet. Uh, at My younger son was probably 10 or 11. Um, and we monitored it. Though, as much as we no, could. No, but but, as so, long, but unless you keep them away from browsers, if he's at someone else's house and they have a browser, yeah, yeah, yeah. he can open accounts on everything. Totally. Yeah. So, but I'm asking you personally. No, and well, the, you know age, the the way that we dealt with it was, you know, it was not seven or eight, but you talk about it and you check things and you check in with other parents. I mean, I'm I'm not disputing. Like, I I think you're absolutely right, and this is one of the uh, real insights of Abigail Schreier's book, which is that. You know, and we forget this. Kids are different than adults, yeah, and they you. should yes. be treated differently. Yes. And things that are fine for adults to do are not good for kids to do, and all of that. But once you start getting into the nitty gritty of saying how do you police this and how do you regulate it, it comes back to this question more of social norms and of kind of individual familial or parental, um, you know, kind of enforcement mechanisms more than I think overarching not, but, but, legal ones. But but that's not the way we dealt with drinking and gambling. But it is kind of, and like I, I lived, I lived in Ohio. Here. No, no. But I, what I'm saying is, is that, and that's also up to businesses to do what they want. But if you are with your kids in Ohio, um, you can 
you can if you're if you're with your family, if you're with your parent or guardian, you can drink at the age of like 15 in a restaurant. So there's a sliding right, scale I see, I see. and Just, things okay. like that. And okay. to so give away to give away discretion away from families to a government, that's like that is a big deal. And I'm not saying one is right and wrong, but it is a real difference. Okay. So I appreciate that as a libertarian, you're willing to say that kids are different from adults. And yeah. while we, ha- we both have very so libertarian course, ideas yeah, for adults, yeah. but we recognize uh, that kids are different. Um, we recognize, I assume you think it's legitimate. Do you think, it, actually, do you think it's legitimate for states or for states to say there's a minimum age to gamble, like in a casino? Uh, or do you yeah, think that should be entirely so. up to the parents? No, I think it's mostly up to the parents. But yeah, I, I don't lose a lot of sleep over that. And I don't lose sleep over age of consent laws and things like that. Okay. Although so there, there are always exceptions, right? Okay, good. So here's so the two exceptions we've already talked about are sex and addiction. So we agree with it. And things that involve sex or addiction, there might be a role for a government to set a minimum age. I want to add a third category, which is those that by your very action as an individual put pressure on everyone else. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, Social media is unlike anything else we've ever dealt with. I'm, because not, I'm not convinced of that or to say that having access to Instagram at 14 would lead to a social, a, a collective action problem or a particular outcome for a kid that I would say, no, you, you, nobody can consider that. Okay. Now, why did you say 14? I'm just saying, well, it could be 13. Okay, no, you know, it no, could it be 12. It has to be 14. I don't know. No, so, okay, so. I'm just saying it's below 60 yeah, because right. that's what you want right. to make. So let's talk about the Florida bill because I think that's actually a very good one. So my, my, my second norm is no social media before 16. I think that should just be the norm. Uh, it should be supported by age verification. So that's what I'm proposing. Now, the Florida bill that DeSantis just signed a couple of weeks ago says it originally it was that. It was that you can't, in Florida, you can't open an account. It's not banning experience. It's saying you can't have this commercial relationship yeah. with a company until you're 16. And then there was pushback. And so they added on. Now, if you're 14 or 15 and you have your parents' consent, then you can do it. So it's like a Romeo and Juliet law for age of consent. Yeah. Actually, okay, yeah, right? okay, right. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So so actually I'm okay with that. Yeah. And the reason why I'm actually, you know, I the reason why I'm okay with it is because that would force the companies to do something they could easily have done long ago, but they really don't want to do, which is establish a way to get parental consent. Right now, you have no, you really can't stop your kid from doing things unless you lock them away and they can't get to the internet. Um, but if they could develop ways by which, you know, if you have an Instagram account or you're willing to do something and you can verify that you're the parent, you know, then you can give permission to your 14 year old, not your 13 year old, because we have to get it out of middle school. It's a collective action problem. We have to get middle schools free of social media I, entirely. I don't necessarily, uh, let me put it this way, and I, we might agree on this, we need to get rid of middle school. <laughs> um, and and I, I don't say that lightly, I mean, or junior high, because it used to be seven, eight, nine, now it's six, seven, eight. Middle school is a terrible institution. Nobody comes out of middle well, school. What do you propose? To, what do you propose we do? I, you know, just, maybe just it's uh, maybe it's one through eight. Maybe it's one through eight, or you put them in a coma, a medically induced coma, coma. <laughs> for a couple of years. No, that's but, basically what TikTok but is. But restructuring, yeah, that's very good. But you know, restructuring the educational experience so that you're not hitting puberty in a kind of Lord of the Flies scenario, and we we need to be thinking more creatively about that. 